In the opening scene, we are introduced to a man named Dom Cobb, I've seen this movie a million times, I don't remember him having such a stupid name, who wakes up on a shore in a state of extreme fatigue. He momentarily notices two children playing in the sand before losing consciousness again. Shortly after, an armed guard discovers him and takes him to a grand mansion owned by an old, wealthy Japanese businessman. There he is offered some food, while the old man claims that Cobb reminds him of a man he met in a half-remembered dream. Stop hitting on me, old man. The film then cuts to a different scene where we see Cobb and his partner, Arthur. They are the extractors who use experimental dream sharing technology to infiltrate their target's subconscious and extract information. Most of the time, they work for big corporations to steal information from their rivals. They are currently talking to a potential client named Saito, explaining to him that the new dream sharing technology has rendered thoughts vulnerable to theft. The duo, as the experts in this domain, extend an offer to safeguard Saito against these threats. Cobb explains that when one is asleep, their mind is vulnerable to attack. As a result, he offers to train Saito's mind to subconsciously defend against extractors to protect whatever secrets he may be hiding. However, Saito brushes off their idea and leaves, saying that he'll think about it. Later on, Cobb and Arthur walk outside to a gathering. They discuss the whereabouts of Saito's secret safe, revealing their mission to steal his expansion plans and deliver the information to an organization called Kobol Engineering. During this, they notice Cobb's ex-wife, Mal, prompting him to approach her. Mal asks if he misses her, to which he responds that he can't trust her anymore. Following this, they retreat to a private room, where Cobb rigs a chair with a rope and lowers himself out of the window, asking Mal to stay on the chair. However, she deceives him by getting up from the seat, causing a near mishap. Despite the setback, Cobb successfully gains access to the room below, where he exchanges the contents of Saito's safe. Soon after, he is apprehended by both Saito and Mal, who have already taken Arthur hostage. Here, it is revealed that the three men are connected to a portable automated Somnison intravenous, or passive device, that administers the sleep-inducing drug Somnison, keeping them all asleep and enabling dream sharing. Their sleeping bodies are watched over by Cobb's other partner named Nash. Within the dream, Cobb shoots Arthur before swiftly exiting the room. He takes cover and opens the envelope, only to discover its contents are counterfeit. Meanwhile, Arthur wakes up in the apartment and instructs Nash to awaken Cobb as things are getting intense. Nash tries to do so, but when Cobb doesn't wake up, he pushes him into a bathtub full of water. This triggers a flood of waves in Cobb's dream, causing him to finally wake up and for this movie's commercials to be very successful. As the dream in Saito's mansion collapses, all three men awaken in the apartment. Cobb forcefully positions Saito on the floor, urging him to disclose information about his expansion plan. However, Saito remains unaffected, revealing that they are still sleeping, revealing a dream within a dream. Indeed, Saito, Arthur, Nash, and Cobb are all asleep in a train, watched over by a young boy named named Tadashi, who monitors the time remaining on the passive device. Shortly after, Cobb, Nash, and Arthur wake up and get off the train while Saito awakens a little later. That evening, Cobb is in his apartment when he receives a call from his children. It is revealed that they are currently living with their grandmother, as it is unsafe for them to be with Cobb. They inquire about his return, to which Cobb responds that his work prevents him from doing so. In an attempt to cheer up their mood, Cobb assures them that he will send them gifts. However, the conversation is abruptly ended by his mother. Shortly after, Arthur shows up, and the two opt to escape somewhere else due to their failed job for COBOL engineering. Just before their departure, Saito approaches them, holding Nash hostage. This time, Saito has different intentions. He seems to be impressed with Cobb's skill in layering dreams over top of one another. So, he proposes that Cobb work for him. Saito assigns Cobb the task of implanting an idea into the subconscious of Robert, who is the son of Saito's rival, Maurice Fisher. The idea is to perform inception on Robert's mind. This is the exact opposite of what Cobb has been practicing through the years. Instead of stealing information from someone's subconscious, he has to enter their mind and change their thoughts. In this mission, Cobb has to manipulate Robert's mind so that he dismantles his father's company. In exchange, Saito promises to clear Cobb's criminal record so that he can return to his children. Driven by desperation, Cobb agrees without thinking twice. Following this, he and Arthur travel to Paris to assemble a team for the mission. Upon arrival, Cobb meets with his father-in-law, Miles a university professor who taught Cobb and Mal about dream sharing and dream design. Cobb asks for the finest architect, and Miles introduces him to a student named Ariadne. Cobb then imparts basic rules and terms
terms of dream sharing technology to her, including the concept of a totem, a personal object that verifies if it's reality or a dream, and a kick, a forceful jolt that awakens a dreamer. After some trials and training, Ariadne is tasked with designing the dream's architecture, something Cobb refrains from performing due to the interference of his subconscious projection of his ex-wife. Cobb then travels to Mombasa to recruit his old friend Eames, who is a skilled British forger. He finds him at a bar and extends an invitation to join the team. Eames agrees, but before that, he alerts Cobb to two men tailing him. Cobb identifies them as Kobol operatives, likely aiming to apprehend him. Sensing the danger, Eames creates a diversion, allowing Cobb to escape. However, the bad guys go after him, resulting in a lengthy chase through the city streets. At the last moment, Saito shows up, rescues Cobb, picks up Eames, and drives away in a limousine. After this, Eames takes them to a local chemist named Yusuf, an expert in Somnison. He talks to him for a while, and eventually manages to convince Yusuf to join their team. Meanwhile, Arthur takes Ariadne into another dream, and introduces her to concepts like creating paradoxes, such as the Penrose Steps. He also reveals that Cobb's wife has already passed away, and her presence exists solely as a projection within Cobb's mind. In the next scene, Cobb and his newly recruited team members strategize to construct a three-tiered dream, with the final level containing the implanted idea. As the team prepares over the next few weeks, Arthur familiarizes Ariadne with the importance of totems, personal, small objects that allow them to distinguish between reality and dreams. Cobb's totem is a spinning top that topples in the real world, but keeps spinning in dreams. After learning of this, Ariadne designs a partially hollow bishop chess piece as her own totem, which does nothing in reality, but says, Fuck you, man! in her dreams. The team needs as much time as possible to complete the job, so they decide to execute their plan on an international flight from Europe to America, which is the longest flight. I beg to differ, Japan is much longer. One evening, after their work, Ariadne notices Cobb dreaming alone in the workshop. Intrigued, she connects herself to his device and joins in his dream. Moments later, she finds herself in an elevator descending through various levels, each representing his distinct memories. She heads to the lowest level, where she finds Mal sitting on a couch. Upon spotting her, Mal grabs a shard of glass to attack her, but Cobb's timely intervention rescues Ariadne. Following this, Ariadne and Cobb exit the dream, and he explains that the reason he can't go home is because of Mal's death, as he is rumored to have killed his own wife. Just then, Saito and Arthur arrive there to convey the news that Maurice has died. Because of this, his son Robert will be accompanying the body to the States in a few days. A few days later, the team boards the flight and sits with Robert in a sectioned off first class cabin. There, Cobb discreetly administers a sedative to Robert's drink, initiating the team's entry into a shared three-layered dream with him. In the first level's urban setting, the team abducts Robert, but they are unexpectedly attacked by his well-trained and armed subconscious projections. Saito sustains several injuries due to gunfire, but the team somehow manages to make it to their hideout. Shortly after, Cobb realizes that experts have fortified Robert's subconscious against extraction attempts. Seeing Saito's deteriorating condition, Eames contemplates killing him so that he can awake in the real world. However, things aren't that simple this time, because Yusuf's sedatives are so powerful that if they die, they'll be sent into limbo, a world of infinite subconsciousness. Faced with this limitation, the team resolves to proceed with their plan. Eves then impersonates Robert's grandfather, Peter, adopting an alternate will as the idea to dissolve the company. Eames tries to provoke Robert, saying that his father loved him and wanted him to build something of his own. Meanwhile, Ariadne confronts Cobb about the control he has over his own subconscious, prompting Cobb to finally admit his inability to keep Mal out of his thoughts. He divulges that he and Mal entered into limbo during dream-sharing experimentation, undergoing almost 50 years in a single night due to the time dilation with reality. At one point, Mal refused to return to reality, so Cobb performed an inception on her to convince her. Despite returning to the real world, Mal continued to believe that she was still dreaming and that they must die to wake up. However, she refused to leave without Cobb because she loved him so much. Tragically, on their wedding day, she committed the unthinkable and framed Cobb, compelling him to follow suit. Failing to prove his innocence, Cobb left his children behind and fled the country. With the hideout in danger of being infiltrated, the team places Robert in a van and sedates him before driving off. They then prepare to enter the second level dreamt by Arthur, while Yusuf steers the van away from the pursuing projections. Within the second layer of the dream, Cobb meets Robert in a hotel and says that he is there to protect him as someone is trying to access his mind. He helps Robert remember that he's been killed 
kidnapped and leads him to a hotel room where the rest of the team regroups. Cobb also persuades Robert that he has been abducted by Peter, who wants to stop the dissolution plan. When Robert is convinced, Cobb suggests that they enter Peter's dreams to uncover the truth about the safe's contents so that he can decide for himself. Robert consents and the team delves into the third dream layer. This time, Arthur remains behind to watch over them and to give them a synchronized kick when necessary. The third dream is set in snow-covered mountains where Robert's safe is heavily guarded in a mountainside fort. In order to divert the guards' attention, the team splits up. Cobb teams up with Ariadne, Eames proceeds solo, while Robert and Saito ascend the mountainside to access the safe. As Yusuf remains control of the vehicle, he is soon cornered on a raised bridge. Faced with no alternative, he plays music to alert Arthur to the imminent kick before he reverses the van off the bridge. As the van plummets in midair, there is a loss of gravity in Arthur's dream. The impact also translates into the third level of the dream. With a mere 10 seconds before the van submerges into the water, signifying three remaining minutes in the second dream for kick synchronization, Arthur tries to think of a solution. <sighs> Goddamn Nolans and their complicated plots. Similarly, in the third dream layer, there's an hour's time remaining. Amid the urgency, Ariadne discloses the quickest route to infiltrate the fortress to the rest of the team. Amidst all this, Saito's health continues to deteriorate. The group manages to enter the main room housing the safe, while Cobb and Ariadne keep a watch from a sniper's angle. Struggling against his injuries, Saito lies incapacitated, coughing blood. As Robert heads forward, upon nearing the safe, Mal suddenly appears from behind. Despite sensing the impending danger, Cobb is unable to fire at Mal, and as a result, she shoots Robert instead. Moments later, Cobb comes to his senses and shoots Mal. Following this altercation, the team rushes towards the safe. Seeing Robert dead, Cobb deems the mission a failure. However, Ariadne suggests descending to one more dream layer, into limbo, in order to bring Robert back. Although it is a tough decision with almost disastrous consequences, they have no choice but to agree. After this, Cobb, accompanied by Ariadne, delves further into another dream. In limbo, Ariadne discovers a crumbling cityscape built by Cobb and Mal during their 50 years of shared existence there. Not long after, they find Mal, who again tries to convince Cobb that this realm is their real home. In response, Cobb admits that he incepted the idea into her mind that Limbo wasn't real, so that she would agree to wake up and be with their children. Mal, however, persisted in her belief that reality was a dream, unlike what Cobb had intended. While they talk, Ariadne finds Robert in Limbo and improvises a kick by pushing him, prompting him awakening in the third dream. After this, Robert accesses the safe only to discover his ailing father confined to his bed. In his final words, Maurice tells his son to live life on his own, thus concluding the inception. In the next scene, the van drops into the water, triggering the kick. In Limbo, the synchronization of kicks pulls on Ariadne, and she calls for Cobb to join her. He instructs her to get going, as he needs to find Saito, who has perished in the third dream and has entered the Limbo. With this, Ariadne, along with the other team members, leap off the side of the building and ride up through the layers of the dream back to reality. Meanwhile, Cobb washes ashore and is dragged into the mansion owned by a wealthy old man, the very mansion that appears appeared in the film's opening scene. This elderly man turns out to be none other than Saito. Cobb reminds him of their arrangement and tells him to come back. The scene then cuts, and we see all the dreamers wake up on the airplane. While Saito makes a phone call, the plane lands in Cobb's home country, and he nervously moves through the customs process, with security scrutinizing his passport and eventually permitting him to pass without any problems. Cobb's father then greets him and drives him back to his residence, where his children reside. Upon reaching home, Cobb spins his totem to check the reality, but when he sees his children, he chooses not to observe the result, and instead embraces them. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.